Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 5.8G splitter for FPV antennas. You could use a professional splitter like this one here, which takes in the source and outputs to RPSMA for your FPV antennas. But these splitters are generally expensive and they are quite heavy. A couple years back, I posted a video on how to make a DIY pepper box antenna. A pepper box antenna is basically a stacked array of two crosshair antennas and they deliver wider beam width and a higher gain than a single cross. A crosshair is a circularly polarized antenna which is different from the linear patches that you see here. Since then I've been receiving a lot of questions on how to face two antennas using coaxial cable and in this video I'm going to show you a step by step. Alright to make the 5.8 GHz splitter these are the main parts required. From the left we have a pair of RP SMA plugs these are identical, I just placed them in this way so that you could have a closer view of it. Make sure that you get exactly the same ones as these two. And then moving to the right, we have the T joint. This is the RPSMA T joint. So you have the center pin on this side and the other side. For this end here, it doesn't matter because basically you could use either RPSMA or SMA, it's your choice. That's the 50 ohms output of the splitter. And you need two of these SMA pigtails. Basically these are SMA plugs with the cable and the cable has to be cut down to 4.5 cm in length, equal length. And lastly, you need some 75 ohms cable. Over here I have the RG179. Notice that it looks exactly the same as the RG316. You can't tell the difference. So you have to make sure that you're getting 75 ohms cable which is the RG179. In this shot you can see I have the two RPSMA connected to the T-joint. And over here you can see the pin inside for soldering the signal wire. Now I'm trying to estimate how much insulation I should strip off and that looks about right. So I'm going to use a wire stripper. It looks like I have to use the biggest hole there. There you go. This is the braided wires or the ground where you're going to solder it to the exterior of the RPSMA, this part here. So this silver braided wires will make contact with the exterior. And then the signal wire in the middle will be inserted through the hole here, like so. All right, done for the other piece as well. Now we need to strip off the insulation of the signal wire, which is the white plastic. To do that, we will use the wire stripper again, and we're going to strip off 1 mm of the plastic using the first hole. And we do the exact same to the other piece. Now it's time to grab that 75 ohms cable. I label this. 75 here so that I could differentiate it from the RG316 which looks almost the same. Anyways, grab the 75 ohm cable that you have and just cut a portion. This end here is a mess, so I'm just going to cut it off. And we will only need a small portion. Now this looks like about 2cm and that's all we need. Now before we use this 75 ohms cable that we have, I'm going to explain to you about impedance matching. For this 5.8 GHz splitter that we're going to make for FPV antennas, it will allow us to hook up FPV antennas here and here. So basically we could stack two antennas, like two patch antennas, and then have 
then output a single 50 ohms which we will plug into our video goggles now the problem is since this is 50 ohms here from this antenna and 50 ohms here we need to convert that 50 ohms to 100 ohms at the moment the reason for converting the 50 ohms to 100 ohms for each end is because when you merge 200 ohms together you get back that 50 ohms which we could use for the goggles which is basically a perfectly match well to convert 50 ohms here to 100 ohms we could use a quarter wave transformer a quarter wave transformer is basically a 75 ohms cable at a specific length of quarter wave without further ado let's calculate the physical length that we need to make this 75 ohms a quarter wave transformer first we need to use the speed of light which is 300 million meters per second and divide that by the frequency which we are using in Hertz so 5.8 gigahertz is basically 5800 megahertz and in Hertz 6 more 0 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and when you divide speed of light with that frequency you get 0 0.051 meters so we're going to convert this into centimeters basically we will multiply that by 100 and now we know that the wavelength for 5.8 gigahertz is 5.17 now we need quarter wave, so we divide the full wavelength by 4 and that gives us 1.29 cm because the 75 ohms cable has a velocity factor and here I'm using RG179 with a velocity factor of 0.69 I will need to multiply this value here by the rating of velocity factor 0 0.69 so after multiplying the velocity factor value I know that the physical length that I need for the quarter wave is 0 0.89 cm and times 10 will give us the value in mm so it's very close to 9 mm isn't it well, it's also worth mentioning that after we cut out the 75 ohms cable the RG179 to this specific length we need to have two solder joints to put this into our matching circuit and the solder joints would be 75 ohms so assuming each solder joint is about 1 mm and we have two of those so we should reduce this length by about 2 mm so I'm going to stick with 7 mm let's start working on a quarter wave transformer I'm going to remove the insulation first alright this is the piece that we need in this shot you could see that the end of the RG179 which is cut by the wire cutter got squashed and flattened so I'm going to cut off this squash end using the pen knife and now it looks much better and here's the hardest part that is to cut it to exactly 7mm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right here. Right, I've left a marking on the plastic and ensuring that there's no parallax error, I think I'm going to cut it right at the Alright, one end is done, now they are for the other end. 
All right, the two quarter waves are done up here. It's very important to make sure they are of the exact same length, so be very precise when you cut them. All right, now I'm soldering one quarter wave transformer to the RPSMA pigtail. There you go. At this stage, if you try to attach the RPSMA plug to this pigtail, by doing so, there's a risk of the signal, which is exposed, shorting with the ground. So we need to put a heat string over the exposed area to prevent the signal from shorting with the ground. Alright, it's done and here's how the heat string looks like. Now I'm going to thin the center pin of the RPSMA plug. Now before inserting the cable into the RPSMA plug, remember to put on the heat string and the conduit first. Because once you solder the joint here, you won't be able to put in the heat string and the conduit. Well, it looks like the length of the signal wire is just right. So when I insert it in, the transformer, the quarter wave transformer, is touching the center pin nicely, as you can see here. That's it. Okay, I've put a lot of solder to secure the barrier wires. So it's very strong now. And then I can put on the heat string. And lastly, to prevent RF leakage, we have to put on the metal cap that comes with the RP SM. Alright, we've finally completed one of the two RP SMA pigtails for the 5.8 GHz splitter. Now let's do the same for the other one. Alright, we've done up the other piece and basically we have completed the 5.8 GHz splitter for FPV. Now that was a quick test of the 5.8 GHz splitter. I'm quite pleased with the results. I'm getting a wider beam width and better reception at the center direction. Here is a 3D printed bezel for the patches. This is how it looks like. At the back, I have a zip tie to hold the splitter in place. And I'll post a link below for the 3D printer part in case you guys need to print this bezel. That's all I have. I hope you enjoyed this video and bye for now.